In 2010, just before my mother passed away, I flew over to Jambrew Benedictine Abbey in New South Wales for a one-week retreat. The purpose of the retreat was to ask God whether he wanted me to be a priest or not. On my first day there, the nun who was to journey with me during the week referred me to today's gospel. We read it together and then she focused on what Jesus said to the two disciples. What do you want? He said to them. She asked me to spend the first day of my retreat reflecting on and writing down what I wanted. I thought it was a very strange request given that I was there to see what God wanted, not what I wanted. I was there to be silent and try to listen to what the Lord was going to say to me. Nevertheless, I did what she asked and found that by the end of the day, I had filled in many pages of my exercise book. Obviously, the answer to my question of whether God wanted me to be a priest or not was on that list, but there were many other requests. Top of the list of what I wanted was the salvation of my cancer-ridden mother, and after that, a litany of prayer requests and other intentions. Looking back now, that in itself was a sign of my calling to the priesthood, a calling to intercede between men and God. So, brothers and sisters, if Jesus were with us here today and he asked you, what do you want? How would you respond? How would you answer? Would you fill multiple pages of an exercise book with all of your prayer requests? We can see in today's readings that our journey with God is one that goes backwards and forward. In the first reading from the book of Samuel, we see that God is calling Samuel. This first action by God happens in each and every one of our lives. Can you recall God calling you? If you're listening to this homily, then at some point in your life, you would have had an experience of God calling you. Eli, having understood that it was God calling Samuel, told him to respond. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In this statement is firstly a request. Samuel asks God to speak and to lead the conversation. Then there is a recognition of who God is and who we are. That is, God is the Lord and we are but mere servants. Finally, Samuel states that he is listening. It is important for all of us to have a disposition to listen and to hear what is being told to us. In the Benedictine tradition, they have the phrase, listen, incline the ear of your heart. Listening for the Benedictines is not just about hearing what is said, but allowing it to penetrate our inmost heart and being and changing us. In Samuel's simple request, he humbled his heart before the Lord, took in what was being told him and changed his life and direction as a result of the call. As the reading tells us, Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him and let no word of his fall to the ground. Brothers and sisters, Samuel let no word of the Lord fall to the ground. Can we say the same for ourselves? I don't think so, otherwise we'd already be saints. So we see in this first reading, the first part of our Christian life, the call and the response of our listening. Then as we go on living our Christian lives, we'll seek the answer to many questions. We'll pray for people's health and conversion. We'll mourn the state of the world and of the souls of many close to us. And so we will build up a litany of prayers and requests, which we will present to the Lord when he says to us, as he did to Andrew and the other disciple, what do you want? And where do we find the answers to our prayers and requests, brothers and sisters? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas is often quoted as saying, we speak to God in prayer, he responds in scripture. So when we have questions of God, of life and the faith, let us return to the Bible and see how God responds to that question, what do you want, through his own word. We see in today's gospel that Andrew and the other disciples stayed with Jesus the rest of the day. Sometimes we need to take a few hours out to listen to what the Lord God has to say. Or perhaps we may even need to take a one-week silent retreat so that we can really put aside the time for the silence necessary to hear how he answers our questions. I remember one night in prayer on the retreat I suddenly exclaimed in my heart, I don't want to be a priest. 
After this, there was absolute silence in my head, which I hardly ever have. So what then was the answer to that big question for my life? Well, eventually, when I had the panel interview for the seminary, I was asked the question, why do you want to be a priest? I told them the little story of my experience at Jamboree Abbey. Bishop Don responded with the words, that's a good sign. And so it was that God answered my question through his bishop. Brothers and sisters, Jesus asks us, what do you want? And after we tell him, he always responds. We must give him the time and the inclination of the ear of our heart in order to hear his response.